The main holiday destination for this past summer was Tuscany. Last time I came here was when I was 12, so I don't remember much and will essentially be redoing everything as if it was my first time visiting. I flew in from Paris to Florence, and my first meal had to be pizza. I was starving and so this wood-fired oven baked pizza was just perfect. I easily finished the whole thing. The first night was spent at Demora Palanca Florence, a boutique hotel with stunning interior. It's conveniently located near all of Florence's main attractions, and so the afternoon was undeniably spent exploring the city. Whether it be the Florence Cathedral or the surrounding baptistery, these external facades were all so surreal to look at. And for those that want to take a look at what's inside, I recommend booking tickets early on in advance. I did not have much time, so I headed over to Vivoli Gelateria, one of the few shops that have discovered Florence's iconic wine windows during the flood in 1966. These windows were used for hundreds of years to sell wine and avoid taxes, as well as a useful way to sell wine during the plague. I loved their coffee and chocolate gelato. My pick for dinner was Trattoria Garga, an amazing spot for classic Tuscan dishes in a unique restaurant setting with floor to ceiling art murals in every corner. Everything tasted so good and the restaurant staff were also very accommodating. So I highly recommend making a reservation here for anyone visiting Florence. The next morning, I woke up bright and early and made my way back into the city centre for a visit to Academia Gallery. I also recommend buying a ticket in advance for this. This was a must visit for me because I missed out on it after getting lost trying to make our way around last time. The statue of David is really worth seeing for yourself. And my other favourite hall from the museum was the Gypsoteca Bartolini which houses a collection of 19th century plaster casts by Lorenzo Bartolini, one of the great sculptors of the Academy. Next, we made our way to Chianti, making a short stop at Antinori Nel Chianti Classico, an architecturally stunning winery that's iconic to Chianti The winery offers wine tours and tasting, but I didn't make a reservation in time for that and we were able to drop by for wine tasting at the shop. My favourite had to be their Moscato, which was well balanced and not too sweet. I had lunch at Osteria di Fonterotoli, a restaurant that focuses on local seasonal ingredients and wild game found on the Fonterutoli reserve, pairing them with wines from different estates in a serene setting. We 
chose to stay in a family-owned estate in the Tuscan countryside of Pienza. It's about a 20-minute drive away from Monte Pulciano, which was where we decided to have dinner that evening. It's the perfect place for those wanting to see the most scenic Tuscan landscapes during golden hour and sunset. I made a booking for dinner at Osteria del Borgo, which had an amazing outdoor terrace overlooking the most picturesque scenery. The food here was in my favorite, but the view definitely was. We started off our next morning with a visit to a nearby vineyard that had an entrance which caught our eye as we drove by. This turned out to be one of my favourite spots of the trip, with a great selection of wine to enjoy in its courtyard. We drove past some iconic photo spots which would have been nicer if we visited in spring before heading over to stop by for lunch at Parco de Mulini, a small village known for its thermal hot springs. headed over to Siena in the afternoon, a medieval city surrounded by a 1,000-year-old wall that is still distinct with character today. It's a town that's worth visiting when you're in Tuscany, with alleyways, historic churches, small shops that's captivating from every corner. One of my favourite moments was stopping by a random courtyard for drinks as jazz music surrounded us. When in Tuscany, another souvenir to bring back is truffle, and so stopping by this shop was something I could not resist. I made a reservation at Antica Osteria da Divo, a restaurant located in a 13th century building with an Etruscan cave. The restaurant itself is divided into three levels for different dining experiences amidst a historic and unique atmosphere. 
we were seated in the lowest floor, which was perfect for a candlelit dinner to end our last night in the Tuscan countryside before we head back to Florence. The next morning, we headed back to Montepulciano for a wine tour at Cantina de Ricci. Perfect for those wanting a glimpse into both renowned Tuscan wines and history. The cellar tour was a very memorable experience with a beautiful cellar and interesting family history. The wine tour ended with a choice of either three or six wines, paired with a plate of cold cuts, breads, and cheese. After spending some time exploring the city, I stopped for lunch at Romantico. This would be my preferred choice if you're looking for a restaurant with good food and a nice view, for both lunch or dinner overlooking the sunset. Making our way back to Florence, we stopped by Gazzale Michelangelo for a panoramic view of Florence, a place I wish I had time to visit during sunset. We ended the evening with dinner at Sabatini, an authentic Tuscan restaurant that is the only Italian restaurant protected by the fine arts, filled with remnants of artists and aristocrats who frequented the restaurant in the 70s. It's a place that's beaming with historical charm. Last lunch before heading over to the airport was a simple yet satisfying serving of burrata, tomatoes, salad and pesto pasta at the hotel to end my food and wine-filled vacation in Tuscany.